What's up YouTube, Marvin4 here with Great American Survival and in today's video we're going to show you how we install a DIY draining scubber plug on a Pelican Bass Raider 10E. Stick with us, we'll tell you all about it. This video is intended for all ages. a big negative when we first picked up our Pelican Bass Raider. We picked this up in a trade, we took it in, we traded one of our kayaks for it, and it has been a blessing. The bad part was anytime we left it outside on our trailer or anything like that and it rained, it became a plastic bathtub. Um, it's over 10 feet long and three feet wide. That's a lot of water. Um, it makes it very hard for you to dump the water out unless you're on like a trailer. Like our trailer tilts, so we just tilt the trailer back, stand it up on one end and the whole thing drains out. But if you're somebody that, one, I've seen people with casting decks, um, the wooden flooring, you know, hard mounted stuff that makes it where you can't just flip your boat over. You just can't do that. That's not, you know, logical. So what we did is we figured out that we could take one of these through hole transducer mounts that I found at Academy made by Atwood these things work great. This thing, I've installed these on John boats in the past. I think it's going to work perfect. We're going to have to run to the store and we're going to have to find ourselves um, a gasket to go with it because this is a water bearing boat. So we're going to need that to make sure we stay watertight. Well, guys, we're going to head to the store. Why don't you come along with us? And what we're going to do is we're, we head into town. We're over here at our local Hills um, Ace True Value here in Winder, Georgia. That's where we live. Just outside of Athens. Go dogs. Now I like my local hardware store. They always seem to have what I need. A little personal touch. People know who you are after you've been going there for a while. It's nice. Wide variety without being overbearing and overloading. You know, they don't have Christmas ornaments and things like that, but they do have like Yeti coolers and hardware and lumber and then more importantly they have knowledgeable people that know what you need and can help you solve problems it's great and they seem to always be cooking i don't know why so we're gonna head back here to the plumbing stuff and see if they have what we need now we're looking for a one and one eighth gasket we need it to be flat and um i figured if i looked here by the faucet stuff i might have they might have what we need. No. They had a one inch, but not a one and one eighth. So not quite big enough for what we needed. So what I'm going to look for now is a template, one of the little gasket sheet kits, where you can make your own gasket. That's what I need now. Hmm, right over, where are they? There we go. And what this is, is it's a package, and you're just going to cut your own out of it. And that's what we need. That'll work perfectly for what we're, for this application. Very nice. Now our true value also right now, being it's springtime, look at this. Spring chicks. You gotta love it. Going into your heart, local hardware store and there's chickens everywhere. Me three or four were those chicks cool very cool stuff Thank you. very cute very now to get started like i said we picked up this atwood through hole connector and then it's a one and one eighth package now this is designed for you for like a live well and we got some teflon tape now when we cut it with the saw later cut the leftover it's probably going to fold it over enough where it ain't ever coming off anyways. But here's our gasket. And we're just going to take one of the the big washer. We're going to lay it on here so we can get an idea of a template. And I'm just going to draw on here, get an idea, take a pair of scissors, and fix it. Pretty easy. 
nothing special had to make two of them one for the top one for the bottom just to make sure I don't get any leakage there you go now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut it out. It doesn't have to be precise because it's going to be sandwiched between plastic and the uh, connector. So it's not going to have a chance to leak as long as you keep it tight. So, and just take your sharp... My, my scissors are quite sharp so I can just trim this around the way I want it. And the one thing I did learn was I should have done the inside first because it does make it a little harder to do the inside after you've made the rest of the gasket kind of small just makes it harder to hold on to so cut out the middle first doesn't take much and for less than ours was four dollars and then the through hole adapter was another six dollars so right now we only have ten dollars in this and we're going to solve our massive water problem for less you know for right at ten dollars we're going to solve our water problem with uh, the adapter and the gasket and I already have the whole saw kit but if you didn't you can either use a whole saw kit or one of the um, spaded bits to cut the one and one eighth hole which is what I'm going to use right now and there's already a hole a spot down here at the bottom which is like it was meant for it to be there it's already recessed and out of the way and uh, with our bit it's just going to cut the hole out and what I'm gonna do when I cut this out I really want to save this this first piece of plastic because I have a hole I need to fix and I'd like to use this green plastic to make to fix it and I'll do that in a later video if you'd like just like that it's like playing operation because it kind of falls down in there you got to get it out almost felt good lord I almost dropped it back in there anyways and it doesn't take much but I will say that the bottom layer was t almost twice as thick as the top. The bottom of the hole is really thick. So, very nice. Here we go. Gonna punch right on through. There you go. Nice. And as you see, you see the big gap between it? That's why you want something that you can adjust because you don't want to leak water even though this does sit above the water line, we still don't want it, want it to be in a situation where we have any issues. As you see, right through. And then the whole adapter is going to have a lot of excess left over. But we're just going to trim that all off later. So we put one gasket up against that side. Then we're going to place it through the hole. And then we're going to put one with the other plastic washer on the other side. Just like that. Is how it's going to look when we're done. And then the boat will be in between. Very cool. This is such a, this has been such a headache. It honestly made me want to get rid of the boat because I, I, I hated it. I hated all the water that was getting stuck in it. So I'm going to wrap this, I'm going to wrap the adapter with some Teflon tape just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You know, one, it seals it, and two, it keeps it from uh, slipping and coming loose. But like I said, I'm going to use a saw and cut the top, the leftover connector loose. When I do, it's going to create enough of a flange where this plastic's probably never coming off unless I pull it off with a wrench. Just like that. Nice. Now we're just going to place it through. Nice and tight. I like that. Barely wiggles. Now we're going to come in from the other side, and when we do, we're just going to place the other gasket, and then the washer, and I mean the nut, on the back side, like that, as you see, just like that. And then we're just going to tighten it down. Now it doesn't have to be overly aggressively tight, but you want to put some pressure on it. You want to make sure it's not going anywhere. And uh, all I used was a crescent wrench. I didn't really have a wrench big enough for this because it's a pretty big nut. And then I just tightened it up. I tightened it up hand tight for a while. And then later on I'll tighten it up with a crescent wrench just to really snug it down and keep it from going anywhere. And the reason why we did this is we want to be able to use one of these. These are the little drain plugs like you find in most boats. And uh, it just makes it where you can get the water out. And it's just going to drop right in. 
Now we've already done this. We got it all installed and I took a saw and cut the other part. But this just plugs right in to one inch drain plug and now we have solved our problem. Let me show you real quick from the back side. We'll go around the bottom. And then I took my saw and I cut it right across there. And it creates a little excess flange, you know, by pushing the extra plastic. So it shouldn't come off ever. Now this is huge. We're going to take this out and look at As we're out here on the water now, we've hit the lake. Uh, we're a good couple inches above the water. And that's with the two and a half horse mercury and a uh, trolling motor battery, which is a full-size car battery. This was $10 worth of investment in about 10 minutes of time, and it solved the biggest problem I've had with this boat. I didn't like the fact that it held water like it did, and I didn't like not having a way to get the water out. I hated having to bail the water out or flip the boat over. It's just not practical. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any comments, let me know what you guys think. Or if you have any tips on any of the future mods I can do on this. I'm looking at putting a casting deck. I think that'll be huge. Make it a lot easier for a little man to fish. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Give us a comment down below. And guys, follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and on Instagram. And we'd love to hear from you. Make sure, guys, to get out there this week. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy nature. Be prepared and stay safe. God bless, guys. We'll see you soon.